Good afternoon. I wanted to stop and, and pause for just, just a few short moments this afternoon. And I wanted to say, first of all, thank you to those of you who invited me to be speakers in the various organizations this year. You know, most of the organizations have been predominantly white organizations, and in many ways they've been all white organizations. And that's, that, that's not unusual. I'm used to speaking to organizations in many different uh, backgrounds and types. Mainstream organizations are usually the ones that maybe I've spoke to those groups most of all, more times than not. However, what was different about this year, this year 2020, and particularly after the murder of George Floyd, the gruesome murder of George Floyd and all the ones that followed after him, was that this time I was invited to speak, to tell my story. It was almost a please, please help us, please, please tell us what's going on here. And so I agreed to do that. And I told them my story. I told my story as a story of, of a woman whose great-grandparents were enslaved. And the stories that they passed down to us, we used to call them slavery time stories, and sometimes we never even wanted to hear those stories. And then having, having been born right at the tip end of the Jim Crow and having experienced the Jim Crow laws and actions, which were really put into place deliberately to make sure that we black, even after the emancipation, even after Reconstruction, that we were really kept in our place. And that that place was legally defined for us, and that place was legally defined as being a place that was less than and with fewer rights and privileges than whites. And, and, as, and, and as a person who, at the age of 14, enters a newly desegregated high school in Little Rock, Arkansas, and and experience life as a teenager that I would not want any teenager to have to experience simply because of the color of my skin and simply because I was stepping into a place that had been decidedly reserved legally at birth. Legally at birth for white people because there was an assumption that white people were somehow superior to blacks and that we didn't even deserve to have the same rights and privileges or access to resources or any of those things that, that white people had simply because of the color of our skin. And so I, I, I told those stories and it was hard for me to tell those stories and I can tell by the reactions of the audience that it was hard for my audience listen to those stories. But I knew one other thing that I learned from those audiences. I learned from those audiences that you knew. I learned that you knew, you know very well that the notion of white supremacy is alive and well in this country. You know very well that, that you have white privilege. You know very well that, that um, there were laws and systems into place that affected us in every aspect of our lives. You knew that. You knew that. You knew that. Some of you worked in the very hospitals where the very health disparities that we talk about existed. You knew. Mm -hmm. Some of you taught in the very same schools where you know that our children were being treated differently. You knew. You knew. Some of you had households that, that you were a part of where conversations were going on and you didn't always agree with it, maybe, but you knew it was no secret. You knew. You knew what was going on. And I think what happened was over the years, you had a hiding place. And you could hide and not say anything. You could ignore it. You could say, I understand. You could do all those kinds of things. You could never share what you knew. You could wait on us to tell our stories. And always wait on us to have to defend our stories. But times are changing now, and it's time. Times are changing now because now, it's got to come out. You can no longer deny that racial injustice exists in this country. You can't deny it anymore. It's known. It's out of the bag. Okay? And you also know that as time has gone on, the systems and structures and processes that were put into place deliberately to hold us down as black people have now spilled over. They spilled over now to other groups. Mm, yes, they have. They 
they feel those. Now we have we have people are, are being discriminated against now who fall into various other categories except for every category is in there. If you're not white, uh, if you are an immigrant, if you're a member of the LGBTQ, LGBTQ uh, group, if you if you fall into any of those categories at all, if oh, I, I could name many categories, because all of those categories are considered to be categories. They don't fall into the realm of being a quote unquote the pure white race. And once that starts to happen, everybody says jeopardy at that point. You see what I'm saying? But you see, those rules were first put into place for blacks to keep us in our place. Now you got to deal with it on a much larger scale than just blacks. you got to deal with it on a big scale. And now we're all a part of that scale. And so as we move into the year 2021, and as I speak to increasing numbers of groups in that year, I want you to, to speak to yourself. Talk in your own selves. Listen deeply. Think back to those times when you yourself have discriminated against black and you knew you were doing it at the time. You may even have felt bad about it at the time. Think back to those times now. Because those times are getting ready to go away. Okay? And they may not go away quickly. may not even happen in my lifetime. But it's going to happen. So... I wanted to just say to you, think about all of this. Let's get ready for the new year. Let's be prepared to make a difference. And Happy New Year 2021.